Hi, and welcome back to a video for ECE 3714 Lab Designs. Today I want to talk to you about Lab 9. We're basically going to design a multifunction calculator without using an ALU. An ALU is an arithmetic and logic unit, which is a combinational data path component capable of doing both arithmetic as well as logic operations. We want to show that if we use the multifunction calculator without using the ALU, it requires many, many lines of I.O. The ALU itself is an individual device that reduces the number of lines required, those I.O. lines or those I.O. wires. And so taking a look at today's design, this example basically comes from example 412 of your textbook. If we take a look at that example, we can go ahead and get some ideas about what we're supposed to do. Um, <clears throat> and so we will go there and um, we'll go up to the top. Sorry, let me just get there. <clears throat> And so taking a look at this example, we see that basically we're going to have eight different operations. We're going to have some arithmetic operations, such as addition, subtraction, and increment. And then we're going to have logic operations, ands, ors, exclusive ors, and nots. And we see that each of these functions have many, many lines. We're not going to use 8 bits for each input. We're only going to use 4 bits, just like we did last week. And so <clears throat> we can take a look at some of those functions. We know that we're going to choose between which function we want to handle by using the control lines. And since we have 8 functions, we have to use 3 control lines. This will basically be the values from all zeros through all ones. <clears throat> when we take a look at this design, one way to handle this is to use the adder that we used in lab 8. So we will continue on that path and use that adder. And then we'll add this AL extender, this arithmetic logic unit extender, that will handle the capability of doing each operation individually on each bit. And so uh, that's the way that we will implement our circuit. And we see that the same functionality will occur for each bit. Uh, and we will basically just use um, <clears throat> the carry-in as well as A0 through A3. Again, we're only using four bits. Okay. Taking a look at our design, we're going to have, um, first we're going to create a project, and that project is going to be called ALU. So we want to use ALU. And when you download the files, <clears throat> um, Make certain that you don't add all of the files at the beginning to your project. We only want to add the test files as we go. If we take a look at the top level, um, we see that the top level is going to basically be this ALU top. And so we're going to work our way down. We're going to start by first creating a project called ALU. And then we want to implement a schematic capture um, that's going to be called AB Extend, okay, for AB Extended. <clears throat> and so create a schematic named AB Extend and have the inputs of AB, X, Y, and Z, as well as outputs of I sub IA and IB. <clears throat> Without putting the contents into it, go ahead and um, implement that and create a uh, symbol out of that. Then we want to go ahead and add the functionality for this. Looking back at our presentation for the AB Extend, we know that what we want to do is we want to <clears throat> um, we want to go ahead and think about how we're going to add the functionality. Each of the functions are going to be handled separately, and so we're going to move our way down. <clears throat> looking at each um, level of this schematic capture that we're going to do. Now here are each of the functions and we see that they are associated with our control lines. <clears throat> so we want to do addition, subtraction, 
um, increment or add one, and then we just want to have an output of just A. So that's basically we're going to use the adder and have that A plus zero. We know <clears throat> that when we're thinking about this, they're all going to go through the adder, and so we have to basically handle addition for each problem. So notice here that we have the addition of A plus zero to output just A. And then we have our four logic operations, A and B, A or B, A exclusively or with B, and A not. <clears throat> okay. So <clears throat> we're going to handle the control lines for these using two muxes. Okay. And then <clears throat> we want to look at the individual extenders. We're going to have extenders for each bit. <clears throat> And notice that the way that we want this to work, we can go ahead and take a look back at our project. <clears throat> and so <clears throat> when we look at the lowest level, the extender, you're going to add two muxes. And so here are our two muxes right here. And I will zoom in so that you can see uh, what I've done here. Okay. So each of these muxes are LPM muxes, and I've set the width of them as um, one. I'm only using one, but I want the size of them to be eight because I'm, I'm basically having an eight to one mux. And notice I have an eight to one mux for A, and I have an eight to one mux for B. Now these are going, to, I'm going to have four of these extenders. This is the AB extend.bdf. And so, um, but they're going to look exactly the same. So I just have to think about one. For the inputs, notice that I've used a bus for these muxes. And, and this is set up as seven down to zero. And so when I'm looking at what I uh, want to do for each uh, function, notice that when they're all zeros, I just want to pass A and B to the adder. So by passing just A and B to the adder, then I will have the addition function. In order to pass A and B through these muxes, <clears throat> then I need to set the um, I sub zero line to A. This is my I sub A down here, uh, to A and B respectively for the zero input. For the I sub one line, I want to subtract and so the way that I will subtract is uh, for the A line for I sub 1, I will pass A. And for the B line, I will pass B naught. So I also have to provide functionality to have B naught in there. Okay. When the control lines, and notice the control lines are listed as X, Y, and Z. Uh, for the control lines, we don't reverse the order. We just use that as X, Y, Z. For the data lines we do uh, reverse the order the first listed and these are all listed separated by commas uh, this is the i sub 7 down to the i sub 0 line <clears throat> okay and so <clears throat> returning back to each functionality for for two when the control line is equal to two we want to have a plus one we can just pass a through the i sub a line and for the B line, notice that we're passing ground. We're going to use the carry in equal to 1 and then do our, for our addition. In our adder, we have A equal to 1, B equal to 0, and carry in equal to 1. <clears throat> the only two places where we have carry in equal to 1 is if we're trying to subtract A minus B or if we're doing A plus 1. Everything else will have the carry in equal to 0. You have to think about the functionality that you need in order to have a uh, carry in equal to one for these two functions. Okay, and so then for all of the um, for for three, we're just going to pass a b is equal to zero. Notice we have ground there, and carry in is equal to zero. Okay, for the logic operations, we're going to pass through A, we're going to have A and B, A or B, A exclusively or with B, um, and not A, <clears throat> or A, I'm sorry, A not, A not, uh, passing through the A mux. For the B mux, we're just going to use ground for each of those inputs. And then each of these muxes are going into 
the atom. <clears throat> Going back to quartus, <clears throat> if we take a look, we see that we have both of those muxes, <clears throat> and I will zoom out just a little bit. And so we see that we have both of those muxes <clears throat> here, <clears throat> and then we have our logic operations to handle <clears throat> those uh, logic operations. Uh, zooming in so you can see it one more time. <clears throat> I've used the muxes, and you can see that each of the inputs are listed <clears throat> um, separated by a comma. Let me zoom in quite a bit so you can see that. And so here is the mux for B, <clears throat> mux for B, and here is the mux for A. Okay, let me see that. And notice for A, we have each of those logic functions. A naught being implemented using an inverter, right? Here we have A naught, we have B naught, we have A and B, A or B, A exclusively or with B. And then I also have defined um, the variable called ground, which I can then use as needed. Okay. For the mux, uh, a couple control lines that you need. Go ahead and set asynchronous clear to ground, right? And I am not using the clocks on either of these muxes, so you can just uh, leave each of those um, unconnected. Okay, and so <clears throat> once we have that level done, we're going to go ahead and add to our project um, a couple of the test benches. So when you add um, the tests, only add those tests as needed. Uh, so I have actually at this level, I have my top level tests. I'm going to remove those because I don't want those in here yet. I do need the test bench, but I want to go ahead and add um, the tests for the extender. And so adding those, then um, and also the do file, add the do file for the extender. And I need to collect the right do file, and so uh, the AB extender test. So this is the one that we want to add. So add those two because uh, we're working at the lowest level and we need those two as well as the, um, the test bench. And so we can zoom back out. Put it all into the window. And we can go ahead and compile that. Make certain that if you have multiple BDFs, as I do here, since I've already created the whole project, that you set your AB extend as your top level. Okay, this should be your AB extender .bdf. Do not call this ALU. You have a higher level that we will create. And so after you have compiled this, uh, then you should go ahead and, and uh, create model sim. Looking at the assignments, make sure that your assignments are set for the correct <clears throat> values. Again, we want to run the gate level simulation. We want this set to VHDL. We want to set a compiled test bench and go ahead and um, call it with the right names because this one we want it to be AL <clears throat> extender test. <clears throat> I'm sorry, AB extender test. Okay, and we need to find our file. Uh, AB extend is the uh, .vt is the uh, test that we want. We, we're going to add that. And let me remove the ALU test for now because I don't need that in there for yet. And make certain that you correct that you get the right do file. So AB extender test .do is the one that you want. To associate with this test and then you can uh, go ahead and run it um, and so when you get the test you should have something that looks like this when we zoom in 
then we see that we have each of the tests. Again, if you um, are getting errors, if you have um, red lines down here under the uh, errors, then you can zoom in and you can find out exactly where your error is occurring. So take a screenshot of that and then you can move on to <coughs> creating a symbol. Okay, and so once we have a symbol of our AB extender, we then can create the next level up, which is our AL extender. And so uh, we will uh, start a new <coughs> um, PDF. Okay, so come here and, whoops, please. Uh, come under file and go to new and you can create a new schematic capture. <clears throat> um, I've already done that and notice now I now have four instantiations of each of my AB extender blocks <clears throat> uh, I need using one for each bit. So four instantiations of that labeled um, A going into each of them and I sub A going out for each bit. I, IA3 through IA0, IB3 through IB0. <clears throat> Taking a look at our PowerPoint presentation, we know <clears throat> that that is um, exactly what we want. <clears throat> we want to feed in through um, this extender handling each bit. <clears throat> okay, looking at our AL extender, we also have to have some functionality for our carry in and so I have that remember only two functions required the the uh, carry in and so uh, implement that as well at this level once you have this level completed I have inputs called a and b as well as x y and z for my control lines my outputs are called i a and i b three through zero I also have an output called carry in <clears throat> um, nothing uh, that of, of difficulty there. After you finish that, go ahead and um, save it and add to your project um, the additional waveform files that you need. Your test benches for, for this level would be the AL extender. So find those two. You have um, <clears throat> the files for AL extender. Okay, uh, here AL extender test, we need AL extender test, as well as we need our do file. <clears throat> and uh, you can do those both at once. I didn't, but you could do both of those. So we'll add that and then also find the our do file. Okay, and um, <clears throat> finding the do file here is our al extender do so we'll add that okay remove from your project your previous um <clears throat> vt files keep the test bench but remove um your uh, ab extender test files now we have our al extender tests we're going to set as our top level um, our AL extender.bdf. So set that as your top level and uh, save it and go ahead and recompile at this level. <clears throat> okay. Make certain that when you start your compilation, actually before you start your compilation, you set your settings for your. Um, <clears throat> For your simulation to have the correct files we have to set up a new test bench so we will delete this test bench we're done with this and we will create a new one this one we're going to call al extender test and we want to find our file and so we will find our .vt file with the same name here it is and we'll add that to our to our simulation uh, test bench and we can say okay make certain that you change your dot do file to your al extender test dot do okay and so now we are ready to run our second test bench we can go ahead <clears throat> and 
compile. Okay, <clears throat> and once our uh, AL extender test has run, we can take a look and zoom in on that as well. And so <clears throat> uh, we want to get used to looking um, at the waveforms. We want to see what's happening when we run. And so if we go back to the very first test, notice the first test is all zeros plus all zeros. And of course, we would expect that our result um, would be zero. Uh, if I click on here, then I actually see that uh, that this column here is going to be wherever my yellow cursor is. And so I have that at uh, 2 nanoseconds. And so I have my values of A and B. I have my values of X, Y, and Z all being zero. And so I indeed do do um, have the functionality of an addition, A plus B, right? And so then um, if we look at some of the other functions we're going through and we're testing uh, different values of A plus B, we come in here and we do a subtraction by setting um, the values of our control to 0, 0, 1. And notice now that, <clears throat> um, that going into uh, I sub A is 1, 1, 0, 0, right? Our value of A, 1, 1, 0, 0. Going into B, we have uh, 1, 0, 1, 0. But going into uh, I sub B, remember we've done the the complement, the ones complement, and so there <clears throat> we have, <coughs> excuse me, zero one zero one, and we have uh, carry in equal to one. Here's our carry in coming out of <coughs> that AL extender um, box, and so <clears throat> this is our um, second waveform that we need to generate. After we've created our second um, waveform and we've taken a screenshot of that, we can come back to our Quartus <coughs> um, schematic capture and create a symbol from our AL extender.bdf schematic. We then create a new schematic level, which we're going to call ALU, and we're going to add that AL extender symbol to this level. <coughs> We also now want to add our adder, and we're going to use the adder subtractor that we used from lab 8. We're only going to do the addition. And so notice we're going to uh, use our control lines, our add subtract input. We're going to tie high so that we're always doing addition. And we're going to have our inputs of carry in, I sub A, and I sub B uh, going in as the data. We're not going to use the clocks for our adder. We're going to just use the combinational logic. So you can leave those floating. Um, we do need to tie our clock enable to ground because we're not using the clock. We also are going to go ahead and tie asynchronous clear to ground. Our outputs, um, the lab only requires you to do the sums. You can go ahead and bring out the overflow and carry out if you prefer, uh, as you can see I've done here. For the size of your adder and subtractor, the same as last time, uh, we're going to have a width of four. Um, we're not going to have any pipelining. So this week, set your pipelining uh, value to zero. <clears throat> and that will eliminate the, pro the uh, additional clocking that was needed for lab eight. Set your <clears throat> ports to A and B, three through zero, X, Y, and Z for your control lines and your output S3 through 0 in order to run the next um, waveform or the next uh, test bench. Once you've created this schematic, go ahead and save it and add to your project <clears throat> the, the third um, test files. And so at this level, we need the AL uh, testers. And so we'll go to the um, AL test, we need the AL test, and we need the uh, AL test.do file. <clears throat> okay, so uh, we'll get those two. Remember to keep in your um, testbench.vt. And so we have our AL test, we have our AL test.vt, and uh, we have our test bench. And so we're okay there. We can come back to Quartus and make sure and uh, remove your AL extender tests. We don't need those at this level. We'll remove those. We'll set our AL 
.bdf to our top level. And we will change our assignments settings for the simulation, creating a new test bench. This one <clears throat> will uh, delete and we'll add a new one called <clears throat> ALU test. Okay. And <clears throat> the file name that we will use, um, that we will add will be the AL test.bt, ALU underscore test.vt, which we have here. And so we will add that. Say OK. <clears throat> Say OK to our test bench. And we have to change our .do file. So we'll do that. We want the ALU test.do. We have that. Go ahead and apply it and uh, say OK. So now we can go ahead, um, again, save it. And we've set our assignments, and we'll go ahead and recompile. OK, and so once we have Model Sim uh, running for the third uh, time for this lab, we can go ahead and zoom in again uh, for this waveform. And we'll just take a look. Again, we have multiple tests that are being run. We can look at to see, and now our inputs are A and B, our outputs are S, and so we're basically working at the top level. And so again, we're running each of the simulations, um, each of the tests, I'm sorry, and so we have that. You can go ahead and take a screenshot, make sure you're aware of what each of these tests are doing. You can read the test names to figure out uh, what's going on there. Take a screenshot of your um, waveform and um, we will quit that and we'll keep moving on. Okay, now we finished our ALU.BDF and so we can go ahead and use the very top level where we're going to associate with the pins. Create one more schematic, ALU top, and uh, create a symbol out of your ALU.BDF. Add that symbol to your top level. Um, Use a couple debouncers for your keys. We're going to use key 3, 2, and 1 for X, Y, and Z. We're going to use switches 7 through 4 for A, switches 3 through 0 for B, and LEDs 3 through 0 for your, um, your sum or your S output out of your, uh, out of your ALU. Um, you can use carry out and overflow if you choose. Um, those are associated with uh, two other LEDs, LED um, 4 and 5. Okay, and that's what you have to do for Lab 9. Have a good day. Bye.